Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Hopkinton High School for Hopkinton Hillers Baseball on HCAM. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call, Bob Hamilton on camera as the eight and five Hopkinton Hillers welcome in the 11 and six Ashland Clockers for this crucial TVL matchup here on HCAM. It is a gorgeous afternoon for baseball, 91 degrees and sunny, certainly some heat in the area for what I can say is the first time this season that we have had some real baseball heat here for the Hillers. And we are ready to go as Brendan Kelly is set to deal to Jackson Hornung, the shortstop for Ashland. And the first pitch is in there for a strike, this, 0 and 1. There's some heat from Brendan Kelly on his first pitch, right down Broadway. This kid's a dangerous hitter. Wind up and the pitch, just outside one and one. Let's take a look at the Ashland lineup. It's Jackson Hornung, the shortstop, starting things off. Ronan Bates, the third baseman, batting second. Shane Larry, the left fielder, batting third. Wind up and the pitch, up the middle it goes. Takes a hop on the infield grass. Gloved by the second baseman, throw to first, no problem. Four to three goes Hornung, one away. Eric Vanaka, the right fielder in the cleanup role. Michael Krupe, the second baseman, batting fifth. Joe Schilling, the center fielder, batting sixth. Dominic Cavanaugh, the designated hitter, batting seventh. Alex Holas, the first baseman, batting eighth. And Trevor Gustafson, the catcher, batting ninth. Lucas Gustafson is the Ashland pitcher. We'll take a look at the Hillers diamond in just a moment. The windup and the pitch to Bates. And that is in there, four strike one to Ronan Bates. And now we will take a look at the Hillers diamond. Alex Reynolds is behind the plate for the pitcher, Brandon Kelly, as he will catch that one up high, one and one. Jake LeBlanc over at first base, Dawson McMillan at second base. Chris Burdick, the shortstop, Dylan O'Leary at third base. We'll go left to right in just a moment. Wind up and the pitch, upstairs. Left to right, it's Connor Hebert, Ben McKenzie, and Brian Gaughan for the Hopkinton Hillers, who are having a nice season, eight and five overall, two wins away from clinching a playoff spot. And actually, that's uh, three wins away as one of those games does not count towards their playoff record. As that one is hit into left field, it is a single for Bates. Bates is a terrific ball player. He used to be a catcher uh, in youth baseball. I'm not surprised he's in the three hole today. And that'll bring up Shane Larry, the left fielder. Ronan Bates was hitting a 364 coming into this game. 16 runs scored, seven driven in, and five doubles. Certainly has some speed on the base paths as well. There's a strike to Larry. Kelly from the stretch. Shane Larry, a senior, 354 on the season in the cleanup spot. Takes that one outside. Larry has scored 14 runs, driven in 10, four doubles to his credit. We'll take a look at the line on Brendan Kelly in just a moment, the wind up and the pitch. That is hit in the air, foul out of play. One and two. Kelly, a fastball slider pitcher. Occasionally he'll throw a change up, but you wanna watch out for that number one. Brendan Kelly, a sophomore, a 2.63 ERA. One win, two losses to his credit for appearances on the mound. As this is on the ground, right side, slow roller, gloved by the second baseman, throw to first, they get the out. And that will be four to three for Larry. Bates does push up to second. Eric Vinaco, the right fielder, will come up to the plate in the cleanup roll behind the third spot, Larry. Two outs, one on. Kelly from the stretch. Swing strike into the catcher's glove. Brendan Kelly has thrown 13 and a third coming into this game, giving up 16 hits, 10 runs, five of those earned. That one upstairs. 15 strikeouts overall for Kelly. One and one on Vinaco. Swinging strike, got him with the breaking pitch there. 
Brendan's a prototypical power pitcher. I would suspect next year colleges will be sniffing around. Eric Bonacco at the plate, a 353 average, hits this one right back to the pitcher, throw to first, not a problem. And that is the third out of the top half of the first inning. To the bottom of the inning we go. It's a scoreless game between the Ashland Clockers and the Hopkinton Hillers. Set for the bottom of the first inning, the Hopkinton Hillers coming to the plate. A scoreless game between the Ashland Clockers and the Hopkinton Hillers. Let's take a look at the Hillers' batting order. Ben McKenzie, the center fielder, will lead things off. Steven Simos, the DH, batting second. Alex Reynolds, the catcher, batting third. Jake LeBlanc, the first baseman in the cleanup role. Dawson McMillan, the second baseman, batting fifth. Brian Gaughan, the right fielder, batting sixth. Chris Burdick, the shortstop, batting seventh. Brendan Kelly, the pitcher, batting eighth. Connor Hebert, the left fielder batting ninth, and Dylan O'Leary, the third baseman, the odd man out of the batting order. As Ben McKenzie gets ready to step in to face Lucas Gustafson, let's take a look at the Ashland Diamond. Lucas Gustafson on the mound. Trevor Gustafson, his brother, behind home plate to catch. Over at first base, Ryan Hollis. Second base, Michael Krupe. Shortstop, Jackson Hornung. Third baseman is Ronan Bates. From left to right, Shane Larry, Joe Schilling, and Eric Vanaco in right field for the Ashland Clockers, who are also fighting for playoff seating. And they will have a tough battle here against the Hillers. And the last time these two teams met over in Ashland, the Clockers got the four to one victory. As McKenzie awaits the first pitch and takes it outside, one and oh. Gustafson was almost uh, unhittable in the last game in Ashland until he blew out a hamstring round, rounding third base. That one just low, 2-0. and And I believe this is his first start in a while too. Came off the DL just recently. Line up and the pitch. Up the middle it goes. Gloved by the shortstop, throw to first. It's a long throw over, but he gets there in time, and that is one away. A six to three for McKenzie. Steven Simos will step in. Simos, a 344 batting average on the season. He has scored four runs and driven in several. Also has three doubles to his credit as the lefty steps in. Yesterday, Stevie had one of the best slides you'll ever see on a bullet thrown from center field, and he got the tip of the plate with his middle finger. He was called safe. Takes another strike there, 0-2. Uh -oh. Lucas Gustafson for the Ashland Clockers. He's had a nice season, a 2.77 ERA, 6-0 and on the mound, that one low. Six appearances, six games started. He has pitched 30 and a third, struck out 23. Given up 13 runs, 12 of which were earned. That one upstairs. Two and two. A little bit of a wind here start of this one. Right side past the glove of Hollis and that'll get through for a base hit. A single for Simos and he just powered that one right down the first baseline. Score that E3? No, I'd score that a single. That was, I think that was it's just the opposing right. team, Tom. There was a lot of power on that one. Well, yeah, but you want to give Simos the, uh, the batting average as Alex Reynolds will step in. Of course, many of these players on Hopkinton and Ashland teammates come the summertime for Ashland Legion Baseball. And they should have a pretty good group this season for Ashland Legion Baseball. Wind up and the pitch to Reynolds. Just upstairs, 1-0. Some of these kids went last weekend to try out for Milford Legion. So that could be a 
good intra inner city battle. Runner leading off of first, check in, he's back. Alex Reynolds, a 472 batting average, has scored eight runs, driven in eight, three doubles and a home run this season. Runner taking off from first, and the pitch is low. That's going to be a stolen base easily for Simos. Good job by Gustafson behind the plate, keeping it in front of him. Two and oh, with a runner on second and one out. That was a great read by Stevie. He went on first move there. No delay whatsoever. Wind up and the pitch. That one is low, three and oh. Alex has got a lot of real estate between third to short right here. They're trying to keep Stevie close at second base. Lucas awaits the sign. Runner leading off of second. Takes a look at second and now deals. There's a strike. Hillers as a team hitting a 290. As this is hit in the air, foul out of play. Full count now. Ashland has a team hitting a 294, so pretty close there offensively. Curious defense out there with the second baseman and the shortstop. Not sure who's taking the throw. And a runner will get back to second as Gustafson stepped off. Looks like the shortstop's going to take the throw. Constant wind continuing to blow in towards us. Takes a look at second and deals upstairs, and that is ball four. So Reynolds gets the free pass to first. That'll bring up Jake LeBlanc, the first baseman. LeBlanc, a senior, 250 batting average on the year. Four runs scored, five driven in. He can hit to all fields with power. Line up in a pitch, upstairs. Be nice to see them jump on Ashland early. They want this game badly according to the tweet they sent out from their athletic department. Yeah, they got a tough schedule coming up. This would be a great win for the Hillers. Deals. That's fouled into the backstop. One and one. Dawson McMillan due up next. Two on, one out for the Hillers. A scoreless game between Hopkinton and Ashland. Bottom of the first. Gustafson delivers low. He has certainly had his struggles finding the plate at times in this first inning. He's up to 16 pitches already. The optimum is 15 and under. So we'll see how it goes. That's courtesy of the HCAM pitch counter. Both runners leading, and that one is in there for a strike. Two and two. Both runners leading, and certainly a threat to take off. All kinds of speed on the base paths. That one upstairs, full count. 
I wonder how that hamstring injury is uh, affecting his push off. Yeah, we'll see what the leash is with him if he runs into early troubles here. Undefeated on the season so far. Both runners take off. That one's hit in the air over to right center, and that is going to drop into the glove of Joe Schilling. A good job tracking it down. Really had a run in hard to make that catch. Two away, runners stay put. Dawson McMillan to the plate. Dawson is always a threat to bunt. More deadly down the third baseline than the first baseline. He tried to lay one down yesterday, but fouled it off. I if I remember correctly. The junior Dawson McMillan at a 297 mark on the season. Five runs scored, five driven in. Both runners leading and McMillan takes that one upstairs. Throw to second, that actually hits Simos. But of course there is uh, no Indian rubber allowed so he will be safe at second. And I believe that hits Simos unless my it eyes did. deceive me there. He's a ball magnet. He, he didn't even react to that. That was a pretty hard throw, too. I don't think he could see it with his back turned, but he is notorious for getting hit in the box, and now we see him getting hit in the field. Certainly a close call there. He was leading off that second base bag pretty heavy. And now he's taken off towards third, and will go back a swinging strike, one and one. Hiller's space runners certainly try to get in the pitcher's heads. Gustafson looks at second and now deals down low. Gets by Trevor Gustafson behind the plate and both runners will push up. Simos up to third, Reynolds up to second on the wild pitch. It is a two and one count on Dawson. Now you have two runners in scoring position. There is two outs in the inning. Line up and the pitch. That one in just inside. Three and one. Lefty awaits the 3-1. Fouled into the backstop, full count. Being such a hot day, these pitchers want to get in and out as fast as they can. I'm sure Brendan Kelly's over there getting hydrated. Right, it's been a lengthy bottom of the first. Runners on second and third, two outs. The full count pitch right here. Down low, good eye by McMillan. Bases loaded for the Hillers. Brian gone to step in, the right fielder. Gone at a 143 mark on the season. Has played in seven games. One for seven overall at the plate has driven in one run. Swinging strike blazes that one by him. Gossipson gets the sign he likes and deals upstairs. Nice job by Trevor, not letting that one get by. That would have been an easy Hiller's run, maybe two. Wind up and the pitch, upstairs. Just can't find his release point. He's up to 28 pitches now. That is certainly a uh, 
large amount for the bottom of the first. As the wind uh, continuing to get more and more harsh as this first inning continues on. There's a swinging strike, two and two. Two pitch, just upstairs, full count. That's a good take by Brian. That looked, that, that looked like a watermelon coming in, and usually the batter will go for it. Well, a walk here would score a Hiller's run. I'm sure Gustafson going to try to get this one over. There's strike three, got him looking. And that will wrap up a long bottom of the first. It's a scoreless game as we head to the top of the second. Top of the second inning, a scoreless game between Ashland and Hopkinton. Due up for the clockers, it's five, six, and seven. Michael Krupe, the second baseman, Joe Schilling, the center fielder, and Dominic Cavanaugh, the designated hitter. Brennan Kelly out there for another inning of work after giving up no runs and a hit in the first inning. All three outs were ground out for Ashland. Michael Krupe, the second baseman. Very good all around player for the Clockers. Also a member of the Ashland Legion baseball team the past couple of seasons. A 302 on the season. Eight RBIs, eight runs scored. That one upstairs. Krupe is a converted shortstop from his youth days over to second base. He's always a pain in the neck to get out. The lefty will swing at this one and hit it into center field. A high fly ball and getting under it to make the catch is Ben McKenzie for the first out. Joe Schilling, the center fielder, will step in. Shelling at a 255 on the season. And we'll hit this one out of play. Eleven runs scored, seven RBIs for Shelling. There's a strike. That was a beautiful slider. Up and the pitch. This is hit in the air to left field and ranging in to make the catch. Battling the sun is Connor Heber, two away. Nice job by Heber getting to that one, and it's certainly a battle out there with the sun, Larry. And the wind. I think the wind. Yeah, the wind is blowing it in, that's for sure. So it's, I think, more of a defensive wind because it's going to be pretty tough to hit a homer, but it's certainly. Uh, a tall task for the outfielders at times as Dominic Cavanaugh, the DH, takes ball one. Yeah, they don't lack for speed in the outfield with Connor Hebert, the uh, senior tailback for the football team, varsity football team next year. And Ben McKenzie is Ben McKenzie. He can get to any ball, no matter where it's hit. And Brian Gaughan is not too shabby with the speed out right field. 2 0 count. There's strike one. Upstairs. Three and one. That wind uh, nearly blowing Bob over there. But he's holding that camera sturdy. Best in the business. That one's hit in the air to the right side and out of play. Full count. That's an example of the wind blowing in that probably blew it right out of play. And actually, that was caught, excuse me. And that was out of our, uh, our uh, view. But the 
catch was made on the right side. So a fly out to center, a fly out to left, and a fly out to right to wrap up the top of the second to the bottom of the inning we go on HCAM. Bottom of the second inning due up for the Hillers is seven, eight, and nine. Chris Burdick, the shortstop, Brendan Kelly, the pitcher, and Connor Hebert, the left fielder. Lucas Gustafson back out there for another inning of work for the Clockers. He threw 31 pitches in the first inning, a long inning, but no runs for the Hillers. Brendan Kelly hasn't thrown 31 combined in his first two innings. Burdick the shortstop. Steps into the batter's box and awaits the pitch. Got a 286 mark on the season. That one down low. Six runs scored, six driven in. Four doubles to his credit. He pitched a beautiful game in Bellingham yesterday. Four innings and he really had a pitch. This is hit in the air, a high fly ball above the head of the first baseman who will have to Go to his right to make that catch. Blowing around a little bit up there, but he will get the job done. One away. That'll bring up Brendan Kelly, the pitcher. Kelly has only had two at-bats so far this season. 0 for 2 at the plate. That one down low. Gets a hold of one, he can make that snow fence a distant memory. 2 0 now. 220 pounds, 6 foot 2. Leg lift and the pitch. There's a strike. Gustafson deals. He's got some swinging there. I'll even up the count at two and two. And there's strike three. Two away. I'll bring up Connor Hebert. Larry, any input to why uh, Brendan Kelly's in the lineup today? I think they want to get him some at bats, just so uh, if they make the playoffs. You know, it's not a foreign land in the batter's box. That one down low to Hebert, one and zero. Fair enough. Connor Hebert, a junior, one twenty-five at the plate, three for twenty-four, two runs scored, and an RBI to his credit. He can really fly, as you know. Absolutely. A blooper, he'll get two bags out of it. And he will get the majority of the reps, as you mentioned, at tailback next year for the Hillers football team. That one is going to grab the inside corner, two and one. I think he's going to play both sides of the ball next year in football, if the rumor mill is correct. Oh, I'm sure he will. Coach Gerard certainly uh, will utilize his speedy guys as that one's fouled away out of play behind us. Two and two. Gustafson gets the sign he likes and deals down low, full count. in the dirt just in front of us. Line up and the pitch. Swinging strike. Two strikeouts in the inning for Lucas Gustafson. And that will wrap up the second inning. To the third we go. It is a scoreless game between Ashland and Hopkinton. 
Top half of the third inning. Good pitcher's duel between the Ashland Clockers and the Hopkinton Hillers so far. Do up for Ashland is eight, nine, and one. Alex Holis, the first baseman. Trevor Gossifson, the catcher. And Jackson Horning, the shortstop. That one is up high by Brendan Kelly. Coach Simo says double barrel action in the bullpen. There's a strike. Yeah, and he constantly has pitchers warming up out there in the bullpen area. That one's hit in the air, a high fly ball over to center field. McKenzie signaling he has it, and he does, one away. Nothing like a good pair of Oakleys. Certainly a sunny day today. As Trevor Gostafson will step in, the catcher. Hopkinton has to have this game today if they want to go for the TVL title and get some help from another team. That one up the middle, that's going to get through a single for Gostafson. Jackson Hornung will come up to the plate with one on, one out. Jackson, a dangerous hitter. Hornung, a sophomore, 441 on the season. 26 for 59 at the plate. Takes that Brendan, one outside. Brendan, not unfamiliar with Jackson as they played with the Northeast Longhorns for several years. Jackson Hornung also has scored 24 runs and driven in 13. Five doubles and a homer to his credit. Takes that one outside, 2 0. Grounded out is first and only time up to start this game off. Kelly from the stretch. Looks at first and now is set to deal. Just outside. Three and O. Oh. Ronan Bates due up on deck for Ashland. Line up in the pitch. And he's going to take strike one there. Kelly set to deal. There's strike two. Right across the middle on that one. Full count. Kelly awaits the sign, looks at first. Time called by the hitter. Yet to see Brendan pick over. They sent a runner in motion last inning. Line up in the pitch. That's fouled away. That one got a piece of Reynolds. That runner was off. Maybe Alex is talking to Brendan to Hold him a little bit closer. From the stretch, time called once again. The umpire might get a little irritated if he keeps calling time. That's twice in this at bat. Line up and the pitch. Left side, it's going to get through the gap. And that will be a base hit. A single for Hornung. Gustafson pushes up to second. Two on, one out. Ronan Bates coming up to the plate. Bates hit a single his last time up in the first. Yeah, 
Ashland trying to get the rally sticks going. Down low, 1-0. Bates a converted catcher from his youth, a terrific catcher for Ashland. Got some time behind the plate in his Ashland Legion days as well. That one's fouled away. Kelly from the stretch, set to deliver the 1-1. One, one. Left side down the line, gloved by the third baseman, steps on the third base bag for one, throw over to first, not in time. But it is going to be a force out two away. Yesterday, Dylan made an incredible play on a scalding line drive to third, and he one motion went to first for a double play. 5-3. Shane Leary to step in. <laughs> Kelly from the stretch. Breaking pitch in there for a strike. That's a good call by Alex to start him off with a breaking pitch. Little smile from the hitter. One just inside, one and one. Runners leading, swinging strike, one and two. That was the hardest pitch he's thrown all day. That was gas, pure gas. Hit in the air, it is in fair territory on the right side. First baseman ranging back and will make the catch. And that will wrap up the top half of the third to the bottom of the third we go. Ashland and Hopkinton scoreless on HCAM. Bottom of the third inning, top of the order due up for the Hillers. Ben McKenzie, Steven Simos, and Alex Reynolds. Scoreless game so far between Ashland and Hopkinton. And Larry, as we expected, Brendan Kelly against Lucas Gustafson has the makings of a pitcher's duel. And so far, that's what we have. Well, it's not uh, Greg Maddox and Drew Pomeranz throwing. You got some guys that throw pretty hard. It's nice to have the top of the order up, though, and make Gustafson uh, repeat his first inning pitch count. And he might be out of the game. Kenzie steps in, he lined out his last time up. That one is upstairs, 1-0. Oh. That was 31 pitches in the first inning for Gustafson. Here's a strike. One and one. the leg lift and the pitch. And there for strike two. Gustafson has taken uh, the signs being relayed in from the coach to his brother. That one just low, two and two. hole between short and third. Just outside. Just what the Hillers need is some speed on the bases, any way they can get there. Count is full. here 
between McKenzie and Gustafsson. Down low, McKenzie wins the battle. Steven Simos to step in. He singled and stole a base in the first inning. Stevie's a tremendous bunner, and they may have to scratch out a run. Coming into this game, Ben McKenzie was at a 477 batting average, 19 runs scored, 10 RBIs. And he has wreaked havoc on the base paths this season. Checking at first, runner back safe. I think that was his dummy move, Tom. He can do better than that. Sophomore Ben McKenzie has stolen nine bases on the season. Checking at first, slides back safe. Better move that time. Yep. 540 on base percentage for McKenzie as well. That is actually second behind Alex Reynolds. That one's in there for a strike. Checking at first, runner back safe, throw a little high. Good pull down by Holis. He maybe could have grabbed third base. The right fielder was a little shy in getting in there to back up a bad throw. Yo, one pitch, runner taking off from first and the pitch is low. One and one and a stolen base for McKenzie, his 10th of the season. Again, going on first move. Well, a pretty good situation here for the Hillers. No outs, runner on second, Simos at the plate. Will he lay one down and try to push McKenzie over? If runs are a premium? Yeah, I think with the way he's been swinging lately, they're gonna give him the green light here. One down low, and that's going to go off of the catcher and get by him. A wild pitch, and McKenzie's up to third. That's one way of moving him over. Well, I think that takes the bunt out of play for Unless. now. Unless. I think that's something you try maybe with one out. Well, it's, ah, let him swing. Depending on who's at the plate, of course. That one is low. That's going to make the count three and one. I just don't think that uh, this young man is back fully from his hamstring injury. Well, he's undefeated so far on the season. Struggling here, of course, and that one's low. That's a walk. Simos on base for his second time today. That is the second walk of the inning for Gustafson, and Coach Matt Messer is going to have a chat with his pitcher. Two runners on, and there is no outs. And Simo's heading over to the bench. I think he's just going to talk to his head coach, his father, while there is a pause in the action here. And Coach Messer uh, making sure that Gustafson's okay. Yesterday, uh, they pulled up a delayed steal which worked to perfection. Alex Reynolds to step in. Reynolds walked his last time up in the first inning. Again, they're leaving the uh, left side of the infield wide open for Alex who pulls the ball. Runners on the corners, no outs. That one is low, one and oh. Alex Reynolds, a 472 batting average on the season. Has scored eight runs, driven in eight. Checking at first, runner back safe.
Reynolds leads the team in on base percentage, a 578 on base percentage, 638 slugging. Checking at first, runner back safe. These runners certainly trying to get in the head of Trevor Gustafson. And right now they're trying to get the concentration over to Simos at first, so maybe he'll forget about McKenzie at third as that one is just inside 2-0. Two-o pitch to Reynolds upstairs. He'll take a walk, but if I'm in his head, he wants to cream one. A walk here would load the bases. No warm-up action as of right now for Ashland. And that is a walk. Nope. Late strike call. Three and one. Checking at first, runner back safe. Simos at third, or excuse me, McKenzie at third, Simos at first. Again, just a, I know you there, move from Gustafson. He's really slowing this game down. Certainly is. That one just outside. Reynolds draws the walk, and the bases are loaded with no outs for the Hillers. And Jake LeBlanc coming to the plate. They're bringing in the corners, leaving the shortstop at the second baseman at double play depth. A little gust of wind blowing our way. Leg lift and the pitch. Upstairs. One and out to LeBlanc who flew out his only time up in the first inning. He's through, through this inning, he's 17 pitches. With no out. Hit in the air, foul out of play behind us, one and one. Two up after LeBlanc is Dawson McMillan. Bases loaded, no outs for the Hillers in this bottom of the third. A scoreless game so far, Hillers trying to change that. And they have a good opportunity here. Leg lift and the pitch, down low. He's just laboring out there. Hot day can't be helping him. Yeah, you wonder how long the leash will be if the Hillers keep this going. Leg left hand the pitch. Hit in the air over to left center, and that is going to get down for a base hit. All the way on the hill in left field. One run in, a second run right behind him. And McKenzie and Simos both score for the Hillers. It is a two RBI base hit for LeBlanc, who ends up at second base. I think here comes Captain Hook, the last relief pitcher after he tore his hamstring. Was a pretty good pitcher, if I remember correctly. So a two RBI double for LeBlanc, and that'll be the afternoon for Lucas Gustafson, who struggles in this third inning. Still no outs for the Hillers. As they will try to keep the rally going, but they'll have to do it against a new pitcher. We'll fill you in on who that new pitcher is when we get back. It's Hillers Baseball on HCAM. Continuing on in the bottom of the third, a new pitcher for the Ashland Clockers. It is Jackson Hornung moving over from shortstop to take over on the mound. The new shortstop is Ethan Chaminsky. For the Clockers, Dawson McMillan steps in. 
Two on for the Hillers, no outs, two runs in. Wind up and the pitch. And that one is just inside, 1-0. and oh. Lucas Gustafson still responsible for the two runners on. He's asking the umpire where that pitch was. The umpire signaled it was high. That's not a great way to start off with the umpire. Hornung set to deal. Hit in the air, out of play behind us. One and one. Leg lift and the pitch. In there for a strike. One and two. Jackson Hornung has pitched three and two thirds of an inning this season, has made four appearances, all in relief, two strikeouts, 12 batters faced. And there's strike three. Two benders right in a row, back to back. Yep. Cole Dregsbeck is up to bat. Pinch hitter for Brian Gaughan. Hiller's trying to take advantage of this one out, two on situation. Dregs back has hit in six games, a 571 at the plate. Hits this one in the air, but, and that's foul out of play. 0 oh and 1. I believe he had a three hit game. Maybe it was against Dover Sherburn, not sure. He's four for seven overall at the plate. Four RBIs, four runs scored. Lift and the pitch, just inside, one and one. Hunters on second and third, one out. Two nothing lead for the Hillers. Both runs scoring in the bottom of this third inning off the starter, Lucas Gustafson. Jackson Hornung delivers a strike. From the stretch is Hornung. Hit in the air, and that is coming over towards us, and that is going to land foul out of play, one and two. That was just to the left of our cameraman, Bob Hamilton. And he was ready with his to uh, make the barehanded catch on that one. He's got his army helmet on, so if it hit him square, he wouldn't be injured. No, he doesn't need a helmet. He just uses his head. Triggs back awaits the pitch. Leg lift and the pitch upstairs. Two and two. His curveball's been really effective. I, don't, I wouldn't be surprised if he dropped one in there. Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call. It's Hopkinton Hillers baseball and H cam as this one's hit up the left side right to the glove of the third baseman. And that was a good heads up move by Reynolds getting right back to that third base bag. Nice catch by Ronan Bates. Two away. That was a rocket, but it went right to the glove of Ronan Bates. Reynolds had a scamper back, so he wasn't doubled off. Chris Burdick steps in. Takes that one outside, 1-0. One oh. From the stretch, Hornung shakes off the first sign and now agrees to the second. Swinging strike blazes that one by him. A little sneaky fast. So 
Lamar so good on the relief appearance for Jackson Hornum. As he's help, helping uh, get the clockers out of a jam here. That one just outside, two and one. Good array of fans gathering along the outfield fence to take this one in. Breaking pitch outside. Three and one. Walk here would load up the bases with two outs. Wind continuing to blow in towards us. It has been a factor all game long. Leg lift and the pitch. Down low and he draws the walk. Brendan Kelly to step in for the Hillers. Bases are juiced. Two outs. How many at bats does Brendan have this year? Including today? Three? This is, uh, including today. This is his fourth right now. He could really help himself out here. That one upstairs, one and out. Oh. I'm sure he, him and Jackson are exchanging smiles as they played together for many summers. Lefty trying to help the Hillers here as he will put this one up the right side, slow roller, glove by the second baseman, throw to first. No problem, four to three goes Kelly. The Hillers do score two runs and lead two to nothing as we head to the top of the fourth. Top half of the fourth inning, the Ashland Clockers coming back up to the plate, trailing two to nothing. As the Hillers plate two runs in the bottom of the third, a lengthy bottom of the third. Between the two Ashland pitch pitchers, it was 37 pitches, 20 by Gustafson, 17 by Hornung. As Eric Venaco steps in to face Brendan Kelly out there for his fourth inning of work. Up the middle, that takes a hop on the dirt just in front of home plate. Throw from short, not in time, says the first base umpire who had a good view of it. And Venaco beats it out for the single. That was a well played ball by Burdick. Michael Krupe to step in. Well, he got down the base path pretty quick. It's Chris Burdick had a Sunday hop out there and he threw a pee over to first base. I thought that was a sure out. Checking at first, Benaco slides back safe. Yeah, he showed off the wheels coming up the line. Wind up and the pitch. That is in there for a strike. I'm wondering whether Alex is calling for the pick. There's a ball. One and one. Ron Krupe who flew out his only time up in this game. That's fouled away into the backstop. One and two. Group be pretty, pretty short, but so is Dustin Petroyd, so it goes to show you, you don't need height to play competitive baseball. Wind up and the pitch upstairs. Two and two. Checking at first, runner back safe. Good throw down the line by Reynolds. I think he wants one of those before he graduates. His dad told me yesterday his pop time, time when he receives it to the fielder, 
And this is hit right past the glove of Kelly, but handled by the second baseman, flipped it to second, and the runner was ruled safe, but they do get Krupe heading over to first base, so one away. Almost a double play there, and that was good heads up baseball by McMillan. So the pop time is the time between when the catcher gets it and the fielder gets it at second base, and two is considered excellent for a high school baseball player. And as you can hear in the microphones, the wind really blowing around now. That one is a strike. And we have Bob Hamilton doing camera as well as fetching all the papers that are blowing around from our uh, collection of notes. I could use a hot dog right now. <laughs> That's behind. Yeah, that is going to hit Schelling, so he will get the free pass to first. That's two on with one out now. And Dominic Cavanaugh, the DH, will step in. Need a seven hitter, Tom? Yes, he is. Flew out his last time up and only time up in the second. Well, the wind certainly making things interesting here, to say the least, as that one's inside. Little chin music there. Checked his swing. Yeah, he called it a ball. There's a strike, one and one. Pitching coach Matt Anderson is running down the bullpen. Kelly from the stretch, two on, one out. The one, one. Down low, and that's going to get by Reynolds, and both runners will push up. Bonacco up to third, and Schelling up to second, a wild pitch. A little encouragement there from first baseman Jake LeBlanc. Two on to Kavanaugh. Kelly from the stretch. And this is going to hop up the left side, glove by the third baseman, throw to first, and they get one, but a run will score on the sacrifice. Fanaco comes around. A sacrifice RBI ground out. For Kavanaugh, shelling up to third. Two outs, Alex Holis to the plate. A two to one game between the Hillers and Ashland. Now one inside, one and oh to the lefty. From the stretch, down low, two and oh. Got Timmy Burdick warming up down the bullpen. And Zach Sosinski. There's a strike. I'm sure the pitch count on Kelly is uh, getting up there as well. And this is a fair ball up the right side glove by the first baseman, and he will handle it for the third and final out of the top half of the fourth but the Ashland Clockers do play to run. It is two to one Hopkinton as we head to the bottom of the fourth. Bottom of the fourth inning, a two to one lead for the Hopkinton Hillers after Ashland gets one back on the top of the inning. Due up for the Hillers, nine one and two, Connor Hebert, Ben McKenzie, Steven Simos face Jackson Hornung, the second Ashland pitcher of the afternoon. Came in in relief last inning after Lucas Gustafson continued to struggle. Hebert steps in, he struck out in his only at bat this game, pulls back the bunt, ball one. If he gets it down, it's no fair with Ben McKenzie on deck. Leg left hand the pitch, swinging strike, one and one. This is when Coach Simos is at his very best. Strategy time now. 
pinch run, pinch hit, defensive changes. And this is hit in the air up the left side foul. He liked that pitch, but could not keep it fair. One and two. You recall last inning, uh, Jackson Hornung had a very nice breaking pitch. He might pull that out of his back pocket right now. Now one low, two and two. Just didn't get it over the plate. Likes the sign and he deals. There, strike three, got him looking. Second strikeout in the relief appearance for Horning. I'll bring up Ben McKenzie, who's 0 for 1. He walked and scored a run in the third. Both Hiller's runs, courtesy of a two RBI double by Jake LeBlanc in the third. That one outside. Leg lift and the pitch. Outside, 2-0. Oh. Let me make this guarantee to you now. If he gets on first base with a righty pitching, he's going to go. Line up in the pitch, upstairs. The wind continuing to uh, blow my papers around over here. Good thing it's not hot dog wrappers. We could use some. The 3 0 pitch. In there for a strike. Line up and the pitch. For strike two. Oh, I don't know about that. I want to see that on replay. That was just a Simos to Simos com conference over there. I agree. The on-deck circle. Yeah, I agree with you, Larry. That one was definitely low. Full count pitch. Here's ball four. That wasn't low at all. Right, Tom? That's right. So let's watch Ben McKenzie. And let's see what type of move Jackson Horning has. Steven Simo stepping in. He's having a pretty good day at the plate. Singled in the first, walked in the third, also scored a run. He got hit on the back on a throw down to second base. That's right. Runner leading off of first. That one in there for a strike. I still haven't figured out what, what pitch count Coach Simos likes to send his runners. Long look, look at first from Hornung, and he will throw over. Diving back just safe is McKenzie. Had him leaning. A constant wind as Hornung gets set to deal the 0-1 pitch. And that is a rocket up the first baseline, but foul. McKenzie and Jackson know each other very well. So he'll pay some extra attention to Ben. Go to upstairs. Almost looked like a pitch out there. See if they could catch McKenzie taking off. I'm surprised he's not gone already. I might be expecting it. 
as he slides back safely. Easily. He can get a, maybe a half a shuffle step more. Taking off, down low, the throw to second, not in time. Beats it out, his second stolen base of the afternoon. And Larry, you called that one. Well. And it was a strikeout by Simos. Two away. Reynolds will step in. Three strikeouts in relief for Hornan. Pretty good uh, outing so far by the reliever. I'm still mystified at the defensive of the lineman over there. Reynolds has walked in both of his at-bats today. Take strike one there. Morning from the stretch. Runner leading off of second. McKenzie will head back. I don't think that's going to deter Ben McKenzie from getting a nice secondary lead. He deals in there for a strike. Alex upset with himself that he got two straight yakkers thrown on him. All he needs is a 95 footer and that will plate Ben McKenzie. Runner leading off of second. He's taking off for third. That one's outside, and another stolen base for McKenzie is third of the game. One and two is the count on Reynolds. I think we'll try to steal home. No, not in the fifth inning. <laughs> Hit in the, in the air the, uh, over to sun. right center. Battling the sun is the center fielder, Schelling. He'll make the catch for the final out of the bottom of the fourth. To the top of the fifth we go. It's a 2-1 lead for Hopkinton. And now comes the time in the broadcast that is truly bittersweet. This may be the last time the seniors may take this field in their baseball careers. As I mentioned on previous broadcasts, that I have coached or coached against every one of these fine young men. I've seen some over 200 times, some since they've been eight years old, from Little League to Tondorf tournaments in Med Medway to representing the town of Williamsport tournament in Norwood. I have followed them through their AAU years and their high school baseball, of course. These boys are a credit to their school and have represented their community with great pride and most of all, they have made their parents and family proud. While they may never suit up again together, they will certainly make their mark in the world. Top half of the fifth inning, a two to one ball game between the Hopkinton Hillers and the Ashland Clockers. Due up for Ashland, it is nine, one and two. Trevor Gustafson, the catcher. Jackson Horning, the now pitcher, started the game as the shortstop, and Ronan Bates, the third baseman. As Trevor will step in, he singled in his only at bat in the third. Brendan Kelly out there for his fifth inning of work. And he's pitched a good ball game so far. I'm quite sure Coach Simos will have a quick hook on him. There for a strike. He's given up one run on four hits. There's strike two. Nice slider there. 
He shows a lot of poise for a sophomore. He deals, sit in the air, a high fly ball to the right side. Ranging over is the right fielder, ha has to battle the sun a bit, but he makes the catch. One away. This catch by Gone. That'll bring up Jackson Hornung, the pitcher. Two up next, Ronan Bates, the third baseman. Side one and oh. Leg lift and the pitch. There is strike one. Zach Sosiski running down the bullpen again. He's getting a real workout. Strike two. One and two. Oh, and I knew that was a strike. He just couldn't pull the trigger on it. Pulls the trigger on that one and a foul tip. Pitching coach Matt Anderson has got his eagle eye on Brendan watching for any signs of fatigue. It's followed to the Hillers bench area. A couple of the coaches had to hop out of the way. He works with him all winter long. So he knows him pretty well. The one, two. Reaches for that one and follows it towards the Hillers bench area again. This time barehanded by one of the Hillers coaches. Gets a piece of this one up the middle, glove by the shortstop, throw to first, and it is going to be in time. A six to three ground out for Horning, two away, and that'll bring up Ronan Bates. Yeah, he killed a few worms on that one, Tom. Low in the dirt, one and oh. Kelly deals upstairs. to deliver, swinging strike. Couldn't have get that pitch with a nine iron, but we'll take the strike. There's strike two, grabs the inside corner. Two and two. All Brendan's thinking right now is put him away. Up the middle, gloved at short, throw to first, and it is in time. Nice the, pick by Jake LeBlanc. The second straight, six to three ground out, and it's a one, two, three, top half of the fifth. To the bottom of the fifth we go. It is two to one, Hillers leading Ashland. Bottom of the fifth inning, four, five, and six, two up for the Hillers. 19 on the pitch count. Jake LeBlanc, Dawson McMillan, and Brian Gunn. Hillers hoping to add 
some insurance, but Jackson Horning has done a great job in relief for Lucas Gustafson since coming in in the third. Got out of a bases loaded jam. And then in the fourth, gave up no runs and no hits. 0 and 1. That's fouled away. Jackson's mixing up his pitches quite a bit. Fastball, curveball, fastball, curveball. I feel like the wind only blows when the game is going on. Between innings, there's absolutely no wind. But as soon as the inning starts, there's all kinds of wind. It's very strange. Swinging strike there, he's gonna run down to first. The throw over in time, one away. That is the fourth strike of for Horning in his relief appearance. Dawson McMillan a step in. Bob Hamilton on camera, Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call, Hopkinton Hillers baseball. Going for the bunt there, 0 and 1. Dawson's turned around now, so it's not lefty lefty, it's righty lefty. Should give him a slight advantage. Leg lift and the pitch. And this is up the right side, past the second baseman in the right field it goes, a single for McMillan. And he's another one of those speed guys. We're bringing Brian Gaughan, Cole Driggs back, pinch hit for Brian Gaughan. His last time due up in the third. And now Gaughan back in there to hit in the fifth. Checking at first, runner back safe. That wind actually almost uh, blew me over a little bit there. You should wear your cleats next time, Tom. I might have to. It has to be the windiest field in the TVL here at Hopkinton. Runner leading off of first. Morning looks over and deals. And that one just a little bit high, one and oh. You'll notice that the Hiller runners take shuffle steps to get into their lead as opposed to crossover steps. It's easy to get picked if you're in the middle of a crossover. Wind up in the pitch, on the ground, up the middle, gloved at short, flicked a second for one, throw to first is high. So the runner to first will be safe. They do get McMillan heading to second. So a force out there. Two away, and that'll bring up Chris Burdick, the shortstop. Checking at first, runner back safe. Brian's not a threat to steal head first due to his arm surgeries. That one down low, one and oh. Set to deliver upstairs. One on, one out. Or excuse me, one on, two outs for the Hillers. Zach Sosinski is really toiling down in the bullpen. Do you think he's gonna take Brendan out at this point? That's a possibility with the pitch count being what it is. That one down low. Seventy-six pitches for Brandon Kelly. Three and zero count to Burdick. Morning 
being set to deal. The leg lift and the pitch is in there for a strike. Brendan was due to throw 95 today, but you factor in the heat and the time he was on the bench for those two long innings. I'm not so sure he's going to go out there for the sixth. Checking at first, runner back safe. It wouldn't surprise me completely if they put him back out there and pulled him as soon as he ran into any struggle whatsoever. Counter argument to that is giving the relief pitcher a clean inning. That one is a called strike. Full count. I think Brian will be off on first move on leg lift. And you are right. Get in the air out of play foul. Gone will have to head back to first. Brian Wolf has a helmet over in the dugout. So maybe he will be brought in for defensive purposes. Morning deals gone, taken off once again into the backstop it goes. Two up next is the pitcher, Brendan Kelly. And he is in the on deck circle. Runner leading off of first. He's taken off once again. That one's low, and it's a walk to Burdick. Gone moves up to second. Burdick to first. Two on, two outs. Brendan Kelly to the plate. Kelly 0 for 2 so far this afternoon. Be nice if he could help himself right here. Gone with decent speed at second base. Leg left and the pitch. Got, got a, he gets a piece of this one over to center field. And that is gone. A three run homer by Brendan Kelly. And I could not think of a better way to help yourself than that. He absolutely crushed that ball. That one left me speechless, Larry, almost. Unbelievable. Well, he jacked one off Jack. I'm sure his dad is after that ball. Well, now we know why he's in the lineup, because he can hit balls like that. And that wasn't aided by the wind. So it'll be a little uh, tape measure job to see who would ball further. Ben McKenzie or Brendan Kelly, both sophomores. Connor Hebert steps in. Well, there was no stopping that one. He crushed it. I think uh, Steve Simos went to his bag of tricks and pulled Ryan Wolf out. Leg left and the pitch. And this one is hit in the air to the left side and it is going to carry up the hill. That'll drop for a base hit. Around first, heading over to second, and that is going to be a stand-up double for Ryan Wolf, the senior, who is pinch hitting for Hebert. In 10 years of watching that boy, that's the farthest ball he's ever hit. His dad and his mom come to every game. I think his brother Brendan, a University of Kentucky junior, were up cheering for that. Here comes the rally sticks for the Hillers. Ben McKenzie steps in. I don't think uh, Coach Simos will yank Brendan since he hit a ball 325 feet. On the ground up the middle, good play by Horning. He'll flick it over to first and get the final out, but not before a three run blast by Brendan Kelly. Puts the Hillers up five to one as we head to the top of the six on H cam. Top of the sixth inning, and the starting pitcher, Brandon Kelly, is still up there. And he's due to face the three, four, and five hitters for Ashland. 
It is a five to one lead for the Hillers. After Brendan Kelly absolutely crushed a ball. The last inning, a three run home run, which scored Brian Gaughan, Chris Burdick, as well as himself. And the first pitch of this six inning has been thrown to Shane Larry, the left fielder inside. One and O is the count. That one is down low, two and O. Shane Larry, Eric Van Ocko, Michael Krupe do up for the Clockers who have some work to do down to their final six outs. That one's fouled away. I must say the Clockers bench is the loudest bench I've heard this year. Constantly chanting and cheering their teammates on. The Hillers are rather uh, subdued, but they get the job done. And they need this win badly. That one inside, three and one. Right up in the pitch. That is fouled away just above us, three and two. Seems like Brendan has lost just a little bit of his velocity, but I really can't blame him on a hot day like today. Yeah, especially, uh, as you mentioned earlier, some of the long innings that he's had to wait through to get back out there. That home run made it a little bit nicer. Certainly did. Well, I think we might see him in the batting order a little more often. I agree. As the wind continues on in this sixth inning. Wind up and the pitch down low and that is going to be a walk for Shane Larry. It looks like Sasitsky's coming back over from the bullpen. Going to give him another batter. Yep, I think the result of this batter is going to determine if he'll stay in this game. There's a strike. But what a sigh of relief for the Hillers with that three run homer. Making it a four run lead now. There's another strike 0 and 2. Eric Vinaco, one for two today. Singled and scored a run in the four. In fact, that was the only Ashland run so far this afternoon. That was a nice break and pitch by Brendan. Runner leading off of first. That old side, one and two. Alex popped up like he wanted a back pick down at first base, but the runner wasn't straying too far off the bag but he wants one of those before the year is over. He deals. In there for a strike, and that is out number one. He was at the art museum, that pitch, admiring the art, but nice slider. Michael Krupe will step in, one on, one out. Joe Schelling due up on deck. Checking at first, runner slides back safe. From the stretch, Kelly deals. Hit in the air over to center field. That's going to drop down for a base hit. A single for Krupe. Larry pushes up to second. Kelly will stay in the game for now. Coach Simos is asking him whether he's okay and he got the nod from Brendan. Schelling steps in. That one's low, one and oh. Two 
Two on, one out, that one inside. playing a double play depth. So they want to knock down a ball and Alex Reynolds is going to go out and talk to Brendan. That one's upstairs, 3-0. Oh. Well, I must say, I'm a little surprised Kelly's still in there. No pitcher really wants the hook, but he's starting to wave his arms and shake his arms a little bit. Deals, and therefore a strike, full count. Or three and one, excuse me. Stray ball from the Ashland bullpen. Deals, hit in the air behind us, foul, and that'll fill up the count. Good battle between Schelling and Kelly. Dominic Cavanaugh, the DH, do up next for Ashland. 5-1, Hiller's lead, but two on, one out for Ashland in the top half of the sixth. Inside it goes, and that's a walk, and that'll load up the bases. Tying run, heading to the plate. That's gonna be all for Brendan. Yep, you gotta pull him here. How many pitches is that for? 16. That is 16, 92 overall. He will get the hook here. Or will he? Maybe not. Staying in. Surprising. But Coach Simos has faith in him, so. I don't know if I agree with this one, Larry. I'm not sure whether I agree either. As well as Brendan's been pitching, he's... You got bases loaded, one out, 92 pitches thrown. Up the third base side, glove by the third baseman. He'll tag the third for one. The throw to first is high. It is pulled down, but no out there. Run does score for Ashland. They'll take that out. Absolutely. But it is an RBI for Kavanaugh. Krupe scores on that one. Shelling up to second. Coming to the plate, Alex Holis. Upstairs. Two outs, one on, uh, two on. That one's fouled away. I thought he might have the take all the way. My mistake. 5-2 to two lead now for the Hillers. Kelly trying to work through this sixth inning. Coach Simos having patience, letting him work through this jam. Down low, two and one. Trevor Gustafson, the catcher, do up next. Down low, three and one. A walk here would load up the bases. And a double would certainly plate two. Scary close. From the stretch, he deals, and there's the walk. That's gonna be it. 
But he had a stressful inning there, 22 pitches. Shelling up to third, Cavanaugh to second, Olis to first, and it looks like it will be it for Kelly. I'd imagine it will, but let's see. He did his job today. I'm not gonna predict it yet. And I will. Coach Simos does indeed take the ball. I was cheating though. And Kasitsky will come in and take over on relief for the Hillers. And he will face a bases loaded two out situation with Trevor Gossifson, the ninth hitter in the batting order coming to the plate. It's five, two Hillers on HCAM. Continuing on in the sixth inning, a new pitcher for the Hillers. It's Zach Sasitsky in the game for Brendan Kelly. Pitched a nice game overall, but still at risk for some more runs here as the bases are loaded for Trevor Gustafson. Fouled away, left side, 0-1. Coach Simos loves this type of pitcher. Calls him crafty little lefties. If you go back to the dugout after you've been struck out by one, you shake your head. Brendan, That's a quote. Brendan Kelly went five and two thirds, giving up five hits and two runs, had one strikeout. Pretty good line for the afternoon. Leg lift and the pitch. And this will take a hop up the left side. Love by the third baseman who nearly dropped it. And they are going to call everybody safe. He tried to tag the runner heading to third. The umpire said he missed it, and everyone's safe for the clockers, and another run scores as Schelling comes around. Five to three, and that is certainly an error. That's a tough break right there. So Larry just missing the tag. And now, with the bases still loaded, you have Jackson Horning up to the plate. He's trouble. One for three today. That one is outside. One and oh. Zach Sasitsky, a 131 ERA, four appearances so far this season. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike. And that run that scored will be credited to Brendan Kelly, although it is an unearned run. Zach features a fastball and a curveball. He used to have a devastating changeup, but he hasn't been using it this year. Leg lift and the pitch. Hit in the air to center field. That is driven in, will drop down one in. And now a second run being waved around. The throw home is cut off by Reynolds, and it's a tie game, five to five. Dominic Cavanaugh scores, and Alex Holis. And that is a two RBI base hit by Horning. And how much does that error hurt now? Bring up Ronan Bates. Another tough hitter. Back to back. Two on for Ashland. Gustafson at second, Horning at first. And this is hit in the air. Foul. Over towards the football field where the lacrosse team will be playing tonight. We'll have their senior night. Well, you get a three-run home run by Brandon Kelly to make it a 5-1 lead for the Hillers in the bottom of the fifth, but that lead has quickly disappeared here in the sixth inning. Both runners leading off the bags. Two on, two outs. This one's hit in the air right side, and it is going to be caught by the first baseman for the third out but not before the Ashland Clockers played four runs in the inning and tie up the ball game at five. We will head to the bottom of the sixth. 5-5, Ashland and Hopkinton. 
Bottom of the sixth inning, a five to five ball game. And whenever Ashland and Hopkinton meet up really in any sport, but especially uh, baseball as of late, it has been quite a game. And this afternoon is no exception as Ashland plates four runs on the top half of the sixth inning to tie this game at five apiece. But due up for the Hillers, the two, three, and four hitters, Steven Simos, Alex Reynolds, and Jake LeBlanc. Jackson Horning still out there for the Clockers. And now he has a chance to get the W. As this is hit in the air, over to right field, towards the fence, and that one is going to clear the fence. That is a home run by Steven Simos. And you give up four runs last inning, but you come right back at it at the plate and knock one over the fence to retake the lead. Six to five, Hillers. Another sophomore home run. Whatever the conversation he had with his father on the last at bat, must have got through to him. And that was a blast past the fence there. Two home runs this afternoon for the Hillers. One by Brandon Kelly and now one by Simos. Alex Reynolds steps in. That one is low. Well, that'll mean in the top half of the seventh inning, Ashton will be down to their final three outs. Swinging strike there, one and one. Simos is having a good day at the plate. Two for three, walked, scored two runs. Now responsible for giving the Hillers back the lead as there's a strike to Reynolds, one and two. Alex was a little frustrated yesterday with his plate appearances to try and make up for today. He's 0 for one today, he's walked twice. And he gets a piece of this one. That'll drop in on center field for the single. A pinch run for him, for sure. Jake LeBlanc do up. And they will indeed pinch run for him. Timmy Burdick. Timmy Burdick to step in. No outs for the Hillers, one on. Jake LeBlanc at the plate. And you wonder though, what is the leash with Horning? He's starting to struggle a little bit. And if you're Ashland, you need this win as well and you're still very much in the game. So we'll see if they go to someone else here if Horning continues to struggle. How are your sight lines, the Ashland bullpen? I can see it, no warm up action though, but it doesn't mean they don't have someone ready who's currently in the field. Well, no harm done with Jackson coming in from shortstop to relieve Gustafson. He's gonna pick over, nope. Runner leading off of first, and that pitch is in there for a strike. Timmy Burdick had an extra generous lead. He's really got a lead over there. Checking at first, slides back, just safe. That was close. Got his uniform dirty on that one. He's got to show his mom that he played. Checking at first, another close call. To be careful over there. A good pickoff move by Horning. Horning's laughing because he's played with the Northeast Longhorns with Timmy. But he may sling it over again. Yep. Just safe. Pretty good battle. Base runner and Horning. That is hit down the third baseline foul, 0 and 2. 
Tim Burdick will head back to first. Oilers would love some more insurance, that's for sure. Line up and the pitch. That is just outside, one and two. That was a tough take. Morning from the stretch. to first, long look over at the bag before he needs time. He deals, down low, good play behind the plate by Gustafson, covering that one up. Two and two. As aggressive as Timmy was with getting a lead, I'm surprised he didn't read that one in the dirt. And the pitch hit in the air to center field, and that one will drop into the glove of Schelling. One away. That was a tough break for Jake. Hit it right on the nose. We'll bring up Dawson McMillan, the second baseman. He's scanning the field to see where the defenders are. As I've mentioned numerous times, he's always a threat to bunt. Runner leading off of first, and that one is just inside for a strike. We'll grab the corner according to the home plate umpire. Look over at first, now the throw. Runner slides back safe. Tim Burdick continuing to give Jackson Horning some headaches. I gotta believe he's gonna let him loose. He's got a huge lead over there. And good contact hitter in Dawson McMillan. Leg left hand, the pitch, the bunt, slow roller up the middle, handled by Horning, throw to first, is a little bit off the mark, but in time, and that is good for the second out. Tim Burdick moves up to second base. 10 feet to the left, and that would have been a base hit. Now stepping in is Brian Gunn. He reached on a force out his last time up in the fifth and scored a run. He scored on the three run homer by Brendan and Kelly. Runner on second, two outs. Hillers have reclaimed the lead courtesy of a solo shot by Steven Simos over the right field fence. Here's a strike, 0 and 1. Coach Simos is barking out orders to Timmy Burdick so they can get a big, giant secondary lead as there's no infielder near him. Hiller's lacrosse has started their senior night just behind us, and seven seconds into it, they actually scored a goal already, taking on the Westwood Wolverines, I believe. It's been a great spring season overall for the Hillers. Just about every team is either in the playoffs or in the hunt. Runner leading off of second, the lineup and the pitch upstairs over the head of Gone. Good job ducking out of the way of that one. One and one. A lot of uh, lengthy innings in this game, that's for sure. Up in the pitch, in there for strike two. Lengthy, but not a snooze fest. No, there's been a lot of action in this game. And it, it has been quite the battle for sure. Up, oh, two nothing Hillers now, within the first minute on senior night for the boys lacrosse team. And they're playing just behind us. DJ Sloan with the goal. Here we go, we can give lacrosse updates if they're behind us. I like this. Outside, one and two. Two and two, excuse me. 
You want to have an argument about the snow fence now? <laughs> I concede. <laughs> From the stretch is Horning. Two and two, two outs, runner on second. Hit in the air behind us, foul. Count remains two and two. Nice job fouling that off-speed pitch off. Good battle here between Gone and Horning. He was sitting on red, but got the Uncle Charlie instead. Nice to see the captain clean one out right here. Sun continuing to shine all around the diamond. Wind up and the pitch, swinging strike, and he got him. That'll wrap up the bottom of the six, but not before the Hellers play to run, courtesy of a Steven Simos solo homer to start off the inning. It's 6-5 Hopkinton as we head to the top of the seven. So I'll introduce the seniors by number to where they're heading off to school. Number one, Ryan Wolf, going to Roger Williams University to become a Hawk. Captain Alex Reynolds going to Babson College. Captain Chris Burdick, Boston College, Carroll School of Management. Captain Brian Gaughan, Franciscan University of Steubenville, Ohio. Cole Dragsbeck, becoming a Wildcat at the University of Kentucky. Brett McIntyre, Clemson Tiger. Jake LeBlanc, University of Massachusetts, Eisenberg School of Business. And lastly, Mitch Carpey, who will be an orange man at Syracuse University. Top half of the seventh, the Ashland Clockers down to their final three outs. It is a one-run game, however. A six to five lead for the Hillers. And a dangerous part of the order due up for Ashland. Three, four, and five, Shane Larry, Eric Benaco, and Michael Krupe to face Zach Sasitsky, who came in in relief last inning. Back out there for another inning of work. I would think Dylan O'Leary would be a little closer to the line over there, playing no doubles. But I'm not the coach. Sasitsky set to deal. Leg left and the pitch. Down low, 1-0. Well, this game is a crucial game, Larry, for both of these teams in the TVL standings. It's a must-have game. Both teams likely going to make the playoffs. Ashland already in. But certainly a crucial game as far as seeding and TVL standings. That one's fouled away one and one. Not that I'm looking, but I think it's two to one at the lacrosse game. Three to one now, actually. We like that. 8.47 left to go in the first. Leg lift and the pitch. There's a strike. That's the first breaking ball he's thrown in his outing. That's what crafty little lefties do. He's not little by any means, but by Steve Simos' definition, he's a crafty little lefty. One and two now. Shane Larry 0 for two, did walk and score run in the sixth. And a swinging strike there, out number one. I think he foul tipped that one. I didn't see it. Well, that's where you go back to the bench and shake your head, as Steve Simos would say. Eric Benaco steps in. He is one for three, singled and scored a run in the fourth. Zach Sosinski has been in many a battle through Little League, AAU, JV, and now varsity. This one's hit in the air, foul behind us. Sosinski is in line for the win. Shall he get these three outs? up and the pitch. Foul tip to 0 and 2. He's not a thrower, but he's a pure pitcher. Yeah. 
Krupe on deck. Sosinski set to deal. Down low, one and two. He's upset with himself that he didn't pull the string hard enough. That one low and outside, two and two. Gonna take a little time and groom the mound the way he wants it. Yeah, taking his time here. Leg left and the pitch. Swinging strike, and he is going to run down the line, throw to first, not a problem. Two away. Two up, two down. Michael Krupe to the plate. These fellas know each other well. They did battle for three years down in the Tondorf tournament in Medway. They might have beards now, but they still did battle. Groupie steps in. The Hillers one out away from taking this game. Winging strike. Oh, and one. I thought he pitched out of the stretch, the previous hitter, and now he's pitching out of the full windup. I'll have to find out from him later what that was all about. And that's fouled away. Oh, and two. Ashland down to their final strike. Coach Vera making some defensive assignments. Brian Wolf out in left field. Down the first baseline, that'll get through into right field, and the game tying run is on base. A single for Krupe. Nice effort by Jake LeBlanc. Stretched out as far as he could go. Joe Schelling will step in, the center fielder, one on, two outs. That runner better stay close. He doesn't want to make the last out. And Zach Sosicki might have one of the best moves in the TBL. Shelling 0 for 1. It was hit by a pitch and walk so far today. That one outside. Line up and the pitch. Swinging strike, one and one. I smell something a little bit off speed here. He deals outside, two and one. He's not happy with that pitch. He snapped his glove. Receiving the ball back. There's a strike, two and two. Ashland once again down to their final strike. Throwing from the stretch. Runner leading off of first. Yes, he won. There it is, strike three, and the Hopkinton Hillers get the victory. A six to five win for the Hillers. What a game between these two teams. Absolutely filled with excitement. And we will recap all of that excitement in just a moment, but a crucial win for the Hillers as they improved to eight and five standings wise 
Ashland falls to 11 and 7. We'll be right back at Taylor's Baseball on H Camp. The Hopkinton Hillers defeat the Ashland Clockers 6 to 5 and they get a crucial win in the TVL standings. They improved to 8 and 5 overall. Ashland falls to 11 and 7. This was an absolutely action-packed game. The Hillers struck first in the bottom of the third. A two RBI double by Jake LeBlanc scored Ben McKenzie and Steven Simos to make it two nothing at the time. Ashland responded with a run in the top of the fourth as an RBI sacrifice ground out by Dominic Cavanaugh scored Eric Banaco. It was two to one up until the bottom of the fifth in which Brendan Kelly came to the plate with two on and one out and he smacked the ball right over the center field fence. A three run blast put the Hillers up by a score of five to one, but the game was not even close to over. Top of the sixth, the Ashland Clockers plated four runs in the inning. A wild sequence of events. The inning started off with a walk by Shane Larry, and then Eric Vinaco struck out a single by Michael Krupe, and then Joe Schelling walked to load up the bases. Dominic Cavanaugh sacrificed, and one run scored, and then I walked by uh, Hollis. Gustafson uh, reached on an error, which scored a run, and then Jackson Horning had a two RBI single, which plated another two runs for Ashland, and that tied up the score at five apiece, and then the Hopkinton Hillers Got the job done on the bottom of the inning, and they did it right from the get-go. Steven Simos came up to the plate, first batter of the inning, and he smacks a home run right over the right field fence, and the solo shot made it 6-5, to five. and Zach Sasitsky pitched a pretty clean seventh. He did give up one hit, but got out of the inning with no harm done to grab the win and help the Hillers beat the Clockers 6-5 to five here on their home field. The Hillers scored six runs on seven hits, committed one error. Ashland scored five runs on six hits and committed zero errors. It was a great, well fought out game by both of these teams. And it will certainly be a lot of fun watching them both down the stretch as both of them will certainly be playoff bound. Well, it's been a fun afternoon here from Hopkinton High School for Bob Hamilton on camera. My broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad. I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for tuning in to Hopkinton Hillers Baseball on HCAM. The final score for the final time, the Hopkinton Hillers defeat the Ashland Clockers by a score of 6-5. to five. Thanks for watching, everyone, and we'll talk to you soon.